The SpaceX testing facility at Starbase, Texas is a modern pinnacle of aerospace technology development, a place where the company can rapidly iterate on their design for their next generation of Starship Super Heavy rocket. It's become a sort of mecca for the most diehard fans of space exploration and futuristic technology, a shining example of what some of the greatest minds of our generation are capable of when they are allowed to push the boundaries of possibility. Starbase is also on the eve of a very possible destruction, not from outside enemies, but as a natural part of their own testing process. If you play with fire, you will get burned, and if you play with rockets, you will blow stuff up. As SpaceX pushes the capabilities of their Starship prototype further and further, the odds of disaster grow higher and higher. So, let's talk about some worst case scenarios and we'll try and figure out why Starship is worth the risk. This is the Space Race. So, we know that the Starship, with its super heavy booster, form the largest and most powerful rocket ever assembled. 33 Raptor 2 engines with 230 metric tons of thrust each are going to put out an un- unprecedented amount of energy to lift the Starship vehicle into orbit. And, needless to say, that amount of power could lead to one hell of an explosion if it were to get out of control. Now, we know that rockets don't often have catastrophic failures on the launch pad. That's why SpaceX has been doing all of these fill tests and static fires over the past year. They have the opportunity to make sure that all of these launch systems are working as intended before they even attempt to get off the ground. And we saw the same thing from NASA with their space launch system. They put in the time to thoroughly test their systems even as the world grew more and more impatient with them. And the result was a perfect first launch of the SLS. In the entire history of the Falcon 9, SpaceX has only had one explosive failure on the launch pad, that was back in 2016. Luckily, we have some pretty gnarly video of that explosion taking place at Cape Canaveral, so we can see that there was a very sudden detonation at the top of the booster that spreads downwards to engulf the whole rocket in flames, then the upper stage falls off and blows up on the ground. The launch tower that the Falcon was attached to is totally devastated by the explosion, and is left a crumpled, burning mess. That was pretty surprising for SpaceX at the time. Elon Musk was so confused by the explosion that he actually spent a long while entertaining a conspiracy theory that a sniper had shot his rocket with a bullet, and that caused a helium tank to rupture and destroy the vehicle. That didn't happen. It was eventually proven to be an internal failure. But that leads us to the question, what if a similar event were to happen with a flight-ready Starship Super Heavy stack? Well, a significantly larger explosion, that's for sure. Well, a little while back, our dude Felix from the YouTube channel What About It ran the numbers on the approximately 1,000 metric tons of methane fuel contained within the two rocket stages, and he calculated that a fully fueled Starship would explode with the force equivalent of about 10 kilotons of TNT, which would result in the largest artificial non-nuclear explosion in history, which would be cool to see, but obviously have some very negative effects for Starbase. If the Falcon 9 was able to completely take out its launch tower when the rocket exploded, then it's pretty likely that a Starship would have the same effect on the very gigantic and complex Mechazilla Tower at Starbase. Not to mention the orbital launch mount that it would be sitting on top of, that system would be toast. The nearby orbital tank farm would likely catch some char as well. I think SpaceX does intend to put blast shields between these fuel tanks and the launch mount. The blast would likely send chunks of flaming debris flying out for miles around, there would probably be broken windows in the village of Boca Chica, just a real big mess. The closest equivalent we've seen before would be the old Soviet N1 rocket tests. This was supposed to be their answer to NASA's Saturn V moon rocket, but the N1 never managed to have a successful test flight, 
and in the most spectacular of its many failures, the N1 exploded only a few meters above the launch pad, setting the current record for the largest artificial non-nuclear explosion at the equivalent of about 7 kilotons of TNT. Video of that explosion actually made it out of the USSR, and it was pretty wild. So, Starship would go above and beyond that. Anyway, like we said, pretty unlikely that a modern rocket would just explode like that on the launch pad. The failure of the N1 has been attributed mainly to the Soviets just not taking the time to perform static test firings with the 30-engine booster core, meaning that plumbing issues in the fuel delivery were never detected until it was too late. SpaceX engineers have access to so many testing and simulation devices that everything about the Starship launch should happen in a relatively predictable manner. One aspect of the Starship system that is a bit less predictable is going to be the landing side of the equation. As difficult as it will be to get these gigantic vehicles into space, they also have to come back down safely in one piece. The whole point of Starship is to be a rapidly reusable launch vehicle with super heavy lift capacity. The boosters in particular need to have a very fast turnaround time. Elon has talked about launching three times in a day on the same booster. So this is why SpaceX devised the catch system, where robotic arms on the launch tower will catch the booster out of thin air like a pair of chopsticks. It means that the rocket itself doesn't need any kind of landing legs, which will save a massive amount of weight that can be used for extra cargo capacity. And it also means that the booster can be instantly replaced back on the launch mount, where it is refueled, fitted with a new Starship upper stage, and then ready to blast off again. At this point, SpaceX has a great deal of experience with landing the Falcon 9, and that's obviously going to inform a lot of what they do with the Starship and booster. But there is a very significant unknown factor with the catch system. The first time that SpaceX tried to land a Falcon 9, they were just trying to have it land softly on the surface of the ocean. That didn't go very well on attempt number one, the booster came in too fast and exploded. But on the second attempt, they were able to get the Falcon to gently ease itself into the sea. After that, they brought in the drone ship landing pad, which resulted in several more failures before they eventually got it right. The reason it's so hard to land a Falcon 9 on solid ground is that the Merlin engine can't throttle down low enough to hover the booster. So it needs to perform a maneuver that some people have described as a hover slam or a suicide burn. Basically, the engine needs to shut down the instant the landing gear reaches the ground. If the engine burns too long, the rocket will bounce off the ground and come back up where it usually tilts over and explodes. If the engine doesn't burn long enough, the rocket free falls, hits the ground too hard, and explodes. Now, once SpaceX solved that formula, they've been able to reliably land the Falcon 9 time after time without issue. But they did have to blow up a lot of stuff to get there. Does the same rule apply for the Super Heavy booster? It's a strong possibility that it does. As outrageously complicated as this whole catching maneuver is going to be, the Starship does have a lot going for it. One major advantage to the Raptor engine is that it can be throttled down low enough to hover the vehicle in place above the ground. That is going to be a huge help. If you look at the way a Blue Origin New Shepard booster lands, it will actually come to a full stop in the air, hover for a few seconds, and then ease itself down very slowly onto the ground. The Super Heavy booster should be able to do the same thing. A second advantage to the Raptor engine is its incredible gimbaling range. The Raptor can angle itself up to 15 degrees on the Y and Z axis which is what allows the Starship to perform that flip maneuver to come out of its belly flop into a landing position. The Merlin engine in the Falcon 9 can only gimbal 5 degrees. So, the Super Heavy does offer much more landing control than the Falcon, but SpaceX still need to coordinate that with the clamping motion of the Mechazilla arms, and it all needs to happen inside a very small margin of error. The chopstick arms have to grab the booster by two small pins located under the grid fins. They've got literally just a few feet of play, and anything outside of that is going to end in disaster. 
Now, the fortunate thing here is that the spent rocket is going to be carrying way less fuel than it had on launch. So the explosive potential on landing is vastly reduced. Even if a super heavy were to crash land, it would explode in a very similar way to the old Starship prototypes that failed their landing tests. That's still a very big boom, and since the Super Heavy is much more complex than the old Starship prototypes, over 10 times more engines on board, there is going to be a lot more debris and shrapnel thrown around. And since the booster is coming back down to almost exactly the place where it launched, there is still potential to cause fatal damage to the orbital launch mount and the launch tower system. So a failure on landing would be a much smaller fireball, but almost equally as costly in terms of infrastructure damage. What's really interesting about all of this is that SpaceX is just going to have to try it and see what happens. There's no other way to know. We think that it is likely they will perform an ocean landing at first out over the Gulf of Mexico off the coast from Starbase, just to see how the booster behaves on a propulsive landing. They've landed the upper ship stage before, but the booster is a whole other thing. And if that works out as expected, then we will eventually see SpaceX steer the booster for a return to the landing site. At that point, it's entirely possible that we see a successful catch. I wouldn't rule it out. But it's probably more likely that we see something blow up. During a recent press conference, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson told reporters that SpaceX had assured him they were confident that a successful Starship upper stage landing would happen in 2023. That means getting to orbit, re-entering the atmosphere, and coming in for a controlled landing. And Nelson also reported that SpaceX expects a crewed landing of the Starship to follow in 2024. That's a pretty tight timeline, so a lot is resting on SpaceX to nail the catch maneuver, which leads us to believe that they are going to go into their first attempt as quickly as possible. It's not out of character for SpaceX to go big on a test flight, so I wouldn't even put it past them to try and bring the booster home on the first orbital launch. Given that all the systems are looking good, the team will have the option as the booster is coming down to steer it into the water or back to the base. What decision do you think they make? And what is going to be the result of that first catch attempt? Drop your theories down below. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.